what's up y'all coming at you today with another antique lock this one was actually a local one this wasn't mailed in most time they're mailed in uh if we took look real close three lever guy this one's actually kind of interesting because the levers actually have spacers in between them the logo was uh was here mr canoa industria argentina and if we look at the levers there, it's like a little silver, uh, little silver plates between them. That's basically just spacers, I guess, to fill in maybe the gap in there. When this came to me, the bottom right here, it, this bottom keeps popping off. And I've already kind of tapped it back into position. That pin basically goes through the metal. Here, it was all bent up in this area. I've already done all the repairs on it. Still, you can tell it's still a little bent right there. Uh, but that basically this whole face pops off a little bit too easily. I'm probably gonna tap that down a little bit more uh, through this way to make sure it's good and secure because that is definitely not yet. But it is enough for me to make a key for it. Customer had a choice between these designs, I've got to put a freaking special order in again to restock a bunch of these because uh, this is the last one of these that I've got. She wanted two. I've actually already made one of the keys, so I already kind of know where we're going with this. Right there, that's it. Oh, don't look, no, nope, it's a secret. But uh, let's go ahead and make this key. So we got to go ahead and start. And it's funny, I had a phone call uh, <laughs> to make a key for this. And she's like, I went to a local locksmith and he sold me this blank this this barrel key and but it didn't work it i'm like that's because <laughs> that's because this is a blank it's supposed to be cut down you can't just take a key and expect it to work so on this one let me get a tripod uh almost always you do have to go down there's basically in the u.s market there's two different barrel sizes this is the bigger uh diameter and then there's a smaller diameter Really depends on the pin here. Also depends on how wide it needs to be. So we can see this one is not, is a little bit too wide, number one, and it's a little bit too long. I started to grind this down before I realized I should be videoing this. So basically I'm just gonna go ahead and knock just a little bit more, just so it'll clear that, which I think it's already clearing, but it's still just a bit too tight. So just imagine this a little bit taller and we're gonna get started cutting this key. Let's go ahead and move over here and make our marks so that we can turn it to see what's going on. So we have to have to get rid of this part of the key. For this, I'm gonna be using this key machine. I actually just put a brand new wheel on here. Yay, and it cuts beautifully. Uh, but you can do this with files. I've done this in other videos with files and either way you wanna do it, just for us, it's quicker. So what I'm doing here is I'm gonna mark the back side of this, just like that, with a fine point sharpie. Like that. And now, with that mark on there, we know not to cut beyond that because this first lever is right up against, right up against that blade. So if we cut much beyond that black mark, then it's not probably gonna work right. So we're gonna cut just to the this way of it. Again, using this machine, just because we do so many of these, but if you were to be, uh, you know, if you if you were doing this yourself and you didn't have a slaughter machine, you could take a file and, and just file away at it. I'm not gonna do that. And you'll watch me uh, flip this jaw because this holds the blade a little bit better on this particular machine. And, uh, and then I'm gonna flip the jaw around to get further down.
I'm uh, sorry about that. I was trying, I was trying something different so that you can maybe see the cutter, but I don't know if it worked out or not until I review this video. So there we go. We've got it pretty much right on the uh, where it needs to be. There, looks good. Looks good. Let's go this way. Shoot. Perfect, perfect. So here we're gonna go ahead and mark where it needs to be cut. It looks like the tip is just a little bit too long there because see how it's, see how it's pushing right into it. But as long as we can make contact, we're, we're good. We can go ahead and mark our new spots where we need to cut this and I'm gonna come around the camera here so I can see what I'm doing I see I'm gonna have a little gap right there okay so I'm gonna mark it here so that I know where the bolt is and I'll leave a little section for the bolt there now, I already, met, I already know uh, the cuts on this, but basically you would turn it until you see these, uh, these lift up. And uh, basically, you're going to have three cuts. So we want to remark that. Yep, yep. There we go. So that would be... That would be first lever. And then there's our separation, so. There's a close up view of it. So we know not to cut beyond that to leave room for the bolt. We know to cut basically all the black there and then there and there are our cuts, so. Back to that. of the lock it was fairly easy for me to just come through and cut it out just like that let's give it a check okay so we can see one of our levers is too high there which one is it that would be the very first lever Okay, so now we 
can see the front. It's like uh, that third or the one closest to the bolt now. Needs to go down. One and three both. You can kind of see pressing into the brass right there. See those little marks? It's telling you, telling you that it needs to be cut down. See back there, not three, still a little bit higher. And it's probably gonna get, leave us a nice little mark there. Yep. A little bit high still. Do this in stages so you don't waste a key. switch to hand files, but I just don't feel like hand filing anything, especially since I have a new cutter. I don't feel like hand filing today. You want to make sure the bolt comes all the way out and goes all the way in. And remember, we still have this little dent case here, so I'm going to go kind of tweak that just a bit, but other than that, the key is done other than the other than the finish work. So there's that spacer. If your cuts aren't wide enough, or if they're too wide, it'll pick up other levers, so you got to be careful about that. Okay, I'm going to go paint this down or attempt to paint it down again, and uh, we'll be right back. I didn't mean to start recording, but that'll work. I, uh, I basically uh, made sure the bolt was in, put it down, took a uh, took a hammer and whacked the heck out of it. it I had been tapping on it with this little ball paint hammer right here. To uh, kind of bend that metal back in. Um, everything else here is okay. Except for that. Except for that. So we're going to come in here with some face cap pliers. Kind of bend that up. There we go. Much better. I have a feeling this lock's led a rough life. Okay, now it's time to take both keys. And again, this is why I already knew what the cuts are. There's our keys right there. Both keys hopefully work. Check the other one a minute ago. Yep. Good, good. It may have some minor variances. Like if I put these both of these keys side by side on or a micrometer or a high power, you know, ones, you might see 
Maybe one is a hair longer or a hair wider, but as long as they're pretty dang close, then you're okay. And we're gonna go ahead and do a little bit of finish work on these keys. People have asked me over the years, I just buy these cheap file sets from Harbor Freight. One thing you wanna look out for though, is uh, the red pack, right? Oh, hey, whoa, the no, ha no handle version. There's, there's two different ones, handle, no handle. Uh, if you look at the edge, so there's no file over here, but this side actually has the little file indentation. So that's really important if you need to file like a narrow slot, because some of these don't have that. So just beware. In this case, we're just gonna use this guy. And then we're gonna go finish them with, uh, and also sawing motion for those of you who are anal about your files with these little mini files that it's it's much harder to go toot, toot, toot than it is just to come in here and, and do, do what I'm doing there. So it is perfectly fine to use a sawing motion with a $5 pack of file. Seriously, come on now. And if you're using your $100 files, don't do it. But if you're using a $5 pack of 10 files, then you're fine. You'll be perfectly fine. Okay, and then we're gonna get a little, get a little rounded action going right there. A little rounded action going right there. Yep, okay. just knocking off the burr. There we go, we'll do this to the other key real quick. Hey. So happy. I always hate ordering new wheels, but I really needed it for that machine. It's such a dream. Cutting into brass. Looks like I left a little ridge right there, so I'm gonna kind of smooth that out. There we go. All right. Very light, very light. And again, just come in here, give it a little bevel. Not a lot. Some locks need a nice bevel, some don't. This particular one does not need a heavy bevel so that's really lock dependent all right oh getting to give this a try beautiful 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 watch the window watch the levers do their thing all right to finish these guys off to get rid of these shiny spots we're gonna super, ah, super blue Super, super blue. And it takes uh, two or three little coats of it. I usually use a Q-tip for this, but I don't seem to have any Q-tips here. This may be a fresh bottle. Is it? Is it? No, oh, I've already opened this. All right, so I'm just gonna dip this guy down in here like that. Doop. And apply our super glue, or super blue. You won't do anything at first. So you do have to do multiple coats to darken it up. So we're just gonna do that, let it sit and then come back. You can see it already starting to, starting to get dark there. Oh no, we're gonna super blue. Super blue in my, uh, my nice metal here, <laughs> my nice metal. All right, so it's already started. So yeah, there we go, that's nice, that's nice. That. Get rid of all the little shinies. Okay, put that there. Put that there. Looks like we're good, so we'll cap this real quick. Okay. Ah, this stuff stinks. All right, that's it. Got it all dark. Look 
Looking good. And uh, good to go. It's going to be blue like that permanently now, isn't it? We can sand it. Wipe this off with this. Whew, stinky. Stinky, stinky. Uh, and lastly, we'll go ahead and turbine oil it. I use for these only, for antique locks only, I use this turbine lubricating oil with a zoom spout. Even though I really don't need this zoom spout, it's for equipment, so we're gonna, no, 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 get in there, thank you, get in there. All right, gonna do that. Let's get it between the levers there, just like that, just like that, and then we'll put a little bit on the bolt where it comes out, we'll go ahead and cut those springs too. There we go, good to go. Beautiful. Dry paper towel, get the excess off. Check both keys. Looks like we are done, y'all. All right. Photo time. And there we go. Got us a couple keys made for this Argentinian three lever lock. Thanks for watching, y'all. If you have any questions or comments, post them in the comments section. If you're a customer and cannot find a local resource to do this, please send us pictures of your lock to selockandkey at gmail.com so that we can give you an idea of what you might be looking at to get keys made for them. Thanks again for watching. We'll catch y'all next video.